Wow, what a scorcher. It's really hot out there today, especially if you're trying to do anything active in the sunshine. It's got to be high 20s, at least, possibly even nudging into 30. And to be honest, I don't think I've ever used or heard the word heat wave so many times in a year. It's certainly the, probably the longest hot, dry summer I've known. We had some rain here last weekend but here in West Sussex, that's really the first heavy downpour we've had in at least our little corner of the county since probably May. And that's a good two, three months now. We're just, of course, breaking into August now. So that's a very long spell for there not to be any heavy downpours, even just a bit of drizzle. <laughs> We're desperate for a bit of water. And if it's hard work for us to keep hydrated when we've got water on tap it is a life and death struggle in the bluntest of terms for our wildlife genuinely difficult conditions for wildlife to survive especially for our mammals and our birds they need to be drinking every day and birds need it for bathing of course as well to keep their feathers in good condition there's a lot of young animals about at the moment a lot of young birds fledglings just leaving the nests and this drought is going to be a real struggle for them. But, of course, as with many of these things, there is something that we can do as wildlife gardeners to at least offer a little bit of respite for our wildlife. And that's what I want to show you today. There we are. Helping our wildlife through this hot weather really couldn't be simpler. A shallow dish, some water, and that could be an absolute lifesaver for so many creatures. I've placed my dish here just in a little patch of shade, so hopefully it will stay fairly cool and be in a bit of shelter as well, just so that the animals and the birds don't feel too exposed and too vulnerable when they come down to drink. Birds will come here to bathe and drink animals such as hedgehogs. Hopefully if there's some around, I've not seen any in my allotment here, but fingers crossed they're about. They'll come to drink here and all manner of other creatures as well. And this is a really simple way of just giving a little helping hand to our wildlife. You don't need very much, an old bowl, saucepan lid, whatever you have to hand. Something that might just be kicking around at the end of the garden. Fill a little bit of water into it, keep it fresh and topped up every day and you'd be surprised what a difference it makes. However, there is one group of animals that this sort of water won't be a huge amount of help for and could even be a slight danger to, and that's our insects. Many people don't realise that many of our insects, such as bees, need to drink every day. They don't get all their liquid content from flowers, they do need water as well. And deep water, such as this, although it's shallow, could pose a danger. And natural water sources like the lake and the river near my allotments just along the road, they are actually a risk for drowning for our bees. They need a safe perch where they can land and then just have a bit of a sip and a refresh that way. But there is something very easy you can do for the bees as well as the birds and mammals. Let me show you what I've got set up just over here. Making a watering station for your bees in your garden is really very simple. You only need two items, well, three if you count the water. A shallow dish, such as this one. Again, like with the bird bath, it could be anything you happen to have around. An old mixing bowl, perhaps, or a plant tray, such as this one. And then we need something for the bees to land on. Here I've got a big pot full of just stones basically just basic garden stones nothing fancy about them really these are fairly decorative ones that are used for doing 
toppings, decorative toppings on plant pots, but you could use anything you've got to hand. Glass beads, marbles, both are quite decorative if you want to make something that's pretty to look at. Or just some pebbles that you find lying around as well work just as well. So simply a case of fill up your dish with whatever stones you are using. Spread them out nice and evenly. There we are. Then basically all you need to do is top this up each day with water and bring the water level just below the surface of the stones. And this provides the perfect place for the bees and other insects to come down, land on the stones, and then they've got a 